first scripture lesson is an excerpt from Psalm 27. One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me on a high rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says. Seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Amen. And Jackie? The second scripture reading comes from John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Love has a face. Who is it that has shown the face of love to you? Last week, Anne Louise Pass um, shared with us how her grandmother was the face of love and has shown her in concrete ways what love is, but not just in the ways that her grandmother loved Anne Louise, but how she loved everyone, how she cared for all, especially those who needed care the most, who went uncared for. I imagine many of you might name your own grandmother. You might name a spouse, a parent, a teacher. Love has a face. It's not just ethereal. It is not just an idea. When we are infants, it is essential, as essential to us as food and the care for our bodily needs to receive affection through the face of our caregiver. We won't survive without it. It is that essential. It is that concrete. We need the, uh, the oohs and the ahs and the giggles and the smiles. We literally learn to love. We learn to express ourselves by seeing that face, that literal face of love. I remember when my oldest daughter, Jordan, was just four weeks old, and our, our first child especially, we read all the books, and we, everything, and what they should do, what they can do at one week, and what they can do at two weeks, and three, and so we were, um, my husband was holding her on his lap, um, face up, and, you know, doing all of the googly eyes, and the oohs, and the ahs, and coos, and, um, I was getting ready, getting some things together for an outing, 
and all of a sudden he goes, come here, come here, come here. And he, you know, like we all act like fools, would, you know, in front of a little baby. And he's like, watch what she does. And he stuck his tongue out. And darn it, at four weeks, she didn't stick her tongue back out of him. I could not believe it. She had no control over her arms or her legs. She couldn't hold her head up. But there she was mimicking his face. We learn to love as we are loved. Love literally has a face. We know love. And we can then begin to express love as it is shown to us. Who was the face of love for you? Maybe today as we pray, you want to um, call forth that person in your spirit and give thanks for them. Bishop Michael Curry, the Episcopal Bishop, uh, the Episcopal Church in the USA, and the author of the book, Love is the Way, that inspired this sermon series, describes one of the people that showed him the face of love. He says, in my own life, love has had so many, many faces, but among the boldest is the face of Josie Robbins. Josie was one of the people who took care of me and my sister when my mother passed away after a long illness. Moved by love, Josie jumped in with both arms and never let go. I hope everyone has in their life someone who jumps in with both arms and never lets go. She would take me and my sister down on the bus to the W.T. Grant store in downtown Buffalo so that we could head straight for the parakeets and hamsters like we had done with Mommy. It is that concrete action that showed him the face of love. Josie made the hurt go away. Josie Robbins is what love looks like. It's important that we define the word love here with clarity because these days we use the word to mean so many things. He continues, the love I'm talking about isn't the love on Valentine's Day card. Those are nice, but they're not what I have in mind when I say I love you. Love is the only thing that can change and save our planet. That's the kind of love. He goes on to talk about, like Anne Louise's grandmother, not just how Josie Robbins loved him, not because she was in his biological family, but because she was moved by love. But he says, what I didn't know as a kid was that Josie Robbins' love was shared so generously with my family had changed many other lives as well. Josie Robbins, back in the 50s, was an advocate for teenage moms or young women who became pregnant because they were not welcome in school once they became pregnant. So she started a school for preg uh, student parents and pregnant teens. And she advocated for them over and over and over until their school wasn't needed anymore because they were welcomed in their own schools. Josie Robbins was the face of love. Now, of course, we know that God is love. So, of course, God is going to be the face of love. We know that as a, as a core belief. But God's love, the face of love as shown in God, is not just ethereal. It is not just untouchable. It's not unknowable. It is concrete. It's real. So let's look just for a minute at how it is that God shows us the face of love. Remember that for a long time, the people of God could not see God's face. Not because it wasn't loving, but because the very presence of God was so powerful that it could not be borne by mere mortals. In Exodus 33, 20, it's beautiful, actually. Um, there's a time when Moses 
can see God's face. And it says, God would speak to Moses face to face like a friend. But it also says, uh, God says, you cannot see my face for no one can see me and live. It is not that it's not a face of love. It's that the, the power of God is so much that our humanity cannot bear it. So I know we're moving quickly from Exodus to the Gospels, but that face of God that is so powerful that we can't see it becomes in Jesus the very real, enfleshed, specific, concrete, human face of love. It is shown in the face of this poor Jewish boy born with that same little face that needs to be loved like all of us. Born of a virgin, a carpenter's son who became preacher, healer, teacher, protector of the poor and needy. That is the very specific face of love that God has shown us. Now, if we think about love having a face in Jesus, God's love for us, might we learn something from the way that Jesus, the enfleshed face of love, the enfleshed face of God that is shown to us that was previously unbearable because of its power, Might we learn something about the love of God and the love to which we are called if we look at the faces of the people that Jesus loved? For Jesus' love is a verb. Love is an action. It is enfleshed. It is specific. It is concrete. He enacted it. He didn't just talk about it. He embodied it in real love for real people. So let's look at their faces for a minute. When we look into the faces of those whom Jesus loved, we see love in the way of Jesus. Love has a face, and it is the face of John the Baptist. Now we think, oh, they were cousins. John was a prophet. That's easy for Jesus to love, to see the face of love in John the Baptist. But as Jesus rises out of the water at his baptism and the heavens open and the dove descends and the voice from heaven says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, we forget that Jesus was looking into the face of a radical, of a radical. John the Baptist would not have passed the board of ordained ministry in the United Methodist Church. He didn't dress right. He didn't talk right. He couldn't have answered the questions. And we want to think that we uh, would welcome a great prophet in our midst if John walked in, in whatever modern-day equivalent of camel's hair and eating locusts and wild honey. Even if we tried, we would absolutely turn our heads right here at Millbrook. Jesus' love and his humility had a face. And it was the weathered, worn, maybe stern, maybe angry, woollied face of John, the radical. Jesus' love had a face. It was the face of the leper covered in sores. The face that no one wanted to look into. The person that was unclean. Everybody, everybody ran away at the sight of a leper. In fact, they avoided the sight when there was a leper anywhere near. Someone would say, call out, leper coming, leper coming. And everybody would disperse. But Jesus... Jesus' love was the face of that leper. It was the man possessed by a demon, the one everyone else ran away from. But Jesus, rather than turning away and running away, turned towards that man 
more than one actually possessed by a demon. He acted in love because love has a face, a very particular face. And for Jesus, it was the one, the face of the one who was most in need of God's grace. That is the face that God looks into with love. I was uh, troubled this week to see a Facebook post. I'm not a Facebook regular, but every once in a while I scroll through. A Facebook post by one of my colleagues, in, um, a Methodist pastor in another state, and he was reposting a church sign, the marquee from a church of a different denomination. And it said this, moral confusion, sexual confusion, gender confusion, And at the bottom, it said, author of confusion, Satan. Now, that's true. Satan is the author of confusion. But there are plenty of examples in Scripture where people are confused. And to make this kind of proclamation on the marquee of a sign of Jesus Christ, of a church that is the body of, the face, if you will, of Jesus Christ in this world? Is that consistent with Jesus who looked upon the face of the leper, the person possessed by a demon, women that were unclean? He not only looked on their face, he touched them. The comments in the post, I can just say, in my reading, took away the humanity of the people that were so-called confused. Jesus never takes away our humanity. He looks in our face no matter who we are and doesn't see anything that takes away from the the face, the love, the spark of the divine in us. In fact, Jesus looked into the face of those on the margin and said, you are healed, you are loved. I never knew that the face of love had Down syndrome. There are some telltale signs, physical characteristics that Uh, People with Down syndrome have almond-shaped eyes that slant up. The face is usually a little flatter and maybe the neck a little shorter, small ears. There are some of us that look into the face of uh, someone we don't know with Down syndrome and see beauty. But most, unless it's someone already known to you, someone you already love, most people want to turn away feel pity or sadness. There is, I think, in us something that resists the utter vulnerability of such a face, the dependence, the inability to fit in with social norms. I didn't know that the love of God and love of neighbor would call me to love such a face. I had never known many people with disabilities. But love has a face. And for me, love became the face of Helen Jordan. I lived with Helen at the Red House in the large daybreak community where I lived in the faith community that welcomes people with disabilities. And I learned that the face of love has Down syndrome. Helen was about four feet tall, but... You might say 10 foot tall and bulletproof. She was um, powerful. She never spoke a word, but she communicated volumes. She had a smile that lit up the whole world. When she took your hand, she was communicating. You were to go with her. And often it was to listen to some of her favorite music, Anne Murray or Natalie McMaster, and she would take your hand in hers, interlacing your fingers with her very strong grip, and, and you would, um, you know, pump your arms to the rhythm. 
and with especially Natalie McMaster, you know, it gets faster and faster and faster until she would just throw up her hands and tilt her head back and laugh. That beautiful face of love that I never knew. I never knew the face of love had Down syndrome. She came home with me one year for Christmas and went to, we went to France together. We went to Germany, our whole house, 10 of us, 10 uh, core members with disabilities and 10 of us assisting them on a transatlantic flight. When in September of 2001, we realized that Helen had liver cancer, I spent every day with her in the hospital. And as the world saw the face of destruction and anger and war from September 11th and every day after, as I cared for Helen, I saw the face of love, the face of gentleness, the face of peace in the midst of the end of her life, and the face of love in the midst of everything that was happening in the world. The kind of love which God gives to us and to which God calls us. The love of Jesus, the love that Jesus speaks of and embodies, it's not just ethereal. It is not just an idea. It's not just a belief. It's not just a concept. And it is not an unattainable ideal. We can, on this earth, love in the ways that Jesus loved. That love is tangible and real. It is concrete. It is human. It has a face. That love is given to us in the face and person of Jesus. It is given to us in those we know and those who have shown the face of love to us. And it is given to us to share to share with all of those whom God loved, whom Jesus, the face of God's love for us, the ones that he went to, they sought him out, but he sought them out. The face of the neighbor, the one that we know and the one that we don't, the one we have always loved and the one we never thought we could love, we never thought would be, in our world and it might be personal or it might be in the way we are in the world it might be in the things we are willing to fight for the things that we stand for is the face of love in our neighbor the one that is unlovable the face of every person created is the face of love the face that we are called to love and the face of Christ on this earth.